Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In the previous episode we were trying to scan the moon for resources to test out an ISRU system but had some issues because uh, well things were either scanning too slowly or the scanning cut out repeatedly. The scanning too slowly was if we used a stock way of doing perform orbital survey and then it would just go like 0.01% every maybe 10 seconds, and that's generous, uh, leading to a very long time for us to actually do the scan, especially since it didn't seem to advance during time warp the way that it should. The other option was ScanSat, and I installed that, and the problem was the probe core didn't have enough capacity, and it would just cut out. It would stop doing the scan because it didn't have enough capacity. Well, I figured out what was going on with that, and now both of them can work. We're not at an ideal altitude for the scan, either way, because we're not polar and we're lopsided. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is correct our orbit. And which way are we going? This way. So I'm gonna make a maneuver here to uh, tilt it to a more polar situation. The problem is the way that um, the Earth's tilt is modeled leads us to, it looks like it's an equatorial or polar orbit when we approach the moon and then it turns out to be, well, in this case 15 degrees off. So you can't really eyeball it basically. And so raising the inclination to a more polarish situation and then we'll bring down the apoapsis. And then I'll show you what I did. Our comsats are still doing their job, so no problems there. And I will we will be starting to construct our Mars our test Mars mission in Earth orbit. We have to put a lot of pieces together and we'll start that in this episode too. So it's not just about ISRU this time. I'm not going to try and launch the blue moon here again. This time, we'll launch it next time. Okay, so that should be a little bit closer to optimal, hopefully. It doesn't say suboptimal, so... Um, it looks like we're... Are we doing the... I, I don't think we're doing the ScanSat scan. I think we've only got the orbital one. I, I sort of want I, I I wish I could get both of them to race. I wonder if I can. <laughs> uh, let's see. Or it could mess things up for all I know. And if I say disable stock scanning, that probably... Yep, it has both of them. See, it has perform, perform orbital survey, the stock one, and the ScanSat one. Um, so if I do start scan, now it should not pop up with... Oops, we're out of room, hopefully. Let's see if I have done this correctly. So what the problem was, was we didn't have enough room here. In fact, uh, I don't know if it actually said what the capacity was before, uh, but the sort of stock capacity that they had written in was 105 bytes. I have decided that since we're starting in the year 2000, instead of 1950, which is the realism overhaul default, that the default amount should be 2 gigabytes. I hope this is not a problem. Um, now I want to refresh that map. Have we been progressing at all? We might be high for this. I mean, I, I sort of see a trail going on here. Yeah, I certainly haven't gotten the message that says that it's gone off. Oh, battery low though. Oh, that's LoonSat 1. I wish it wouldn't even pay attention to LoonSat 1. Okay, we, we've got the continuation of a trail here. This is uh, recharging. We should just put it on SAS because with persistent rotation, it'll keep its rotation with respect to the sun. So we'll leave it there. Okay. So this would continue on. And then the other thing I had to fix was the stock version, right? So let's see. Perform orbital survey. Well, it looks pretty slow, doesn't it? But it's still a heck of a lot faster. It's about 100 times faster than it used to be, <laughs> if you can believe that. Um, so, I wonder if it's going to ruin anything by having both of these go on at the same time. I'm not sure. 
there we go see you can see it's much faster chunks and it'll actually finish in some sort of decent amount of time so with this going on I'll leave this in the background and I'll explain to you what happened and why why this is all the case so here's here's note uh, notepad with the configuration file sorry we got to look at configuration files and the configuration file for the hard drives is this hard drive configs in the science folder in uh, so this realism config system science and hard drive configs dot com cfg and then there's one little section here that says for any part that's the asterisk that has a command module and does not have procedural avionics in its name or something like that uh, it needs feature science I don't know what that is and it says for rp0 dash kerbalism <laughs> I don't know what that is either I mean I guess it's the configurations we've got I don't know whatever it is it works even though I don't use rp0 now what this had before was it had feature science and then also let me see a comma rp0 well I'm not using rp0 and I understand why they assumed that they could just do needs feature science comma rp0 and that's because they figured that the only time you'll be doing science is in career mode and the only career mode for realism overhaul right now is rp0 but they forgot about resource scanning <laughs> resource scanning is a science thing that doesn't happen only in career mode or science mode and so you don't need rp0 in order to do resource scanning so it's the one exception and that's why I hit the problem so I got rid of the 4rp0 part of this and instead of having the data capacity be 100 bytes actually it's 105 because it's based on megabytes and oh let me not get into that uh, so I set the data capacity to 2 gigabytes instead and that's what we have here so that's how I fixed the scan scat, scan sat scan sat scanning now if you're wondering well you know what about for non RP0 didn't they have something well not really <laughs> um, now for parts that weren't already configured elsewhere I mean 100 bytes seems weird to make as a default but that's because they were configuring a whole bunch of stuff very specifically you know a whole bunch of parts like Apollo and Gemini and Mercury they give very specific amounts for because they had very specific uh, computers on there which is all very good and then at the bottom they said that the hard drive would have infinite capacity but that's if you have RP0 and after RP0 stuff I tried saying uh, getting rid of this one and that didn't work I guess maybe if I got rid of the after RP0 it might have uh, made the capacities infinite but I I'm not particularly bothered about making the capacities infinite I thought that it would be good enough to set the default capacity to two gigabytes and see how that works out for us I don't mind a few restrictions here and there so that's what I went with next the antennas so the problem we had with transmitting the stock way was that the antenna was transmitting way too slowly and that's because Kerbalism in this configuration scienceantennas.config decided to cut the packet size uh, down by a factor of 10,000 I have changed this to down by a factor of just 100 and that seems to be working fine at least well we can turn back to the game we can see we're at 14.35 percent and climbing hopefully oh I came out of time warp my mistake yep and if we refresh the map we're getting a few more chunks here and there though actually we would have to wait for the full month to actually get all of the moon so I think the stockway is gonna finish first yep anyway I'll come back to you when it's all done okay we're pretty close to getting done here and I want to see whether I actually get my data of course this is uh, not entirely guaranteed so 9900 done it says done it says done do we have oop we do and um, the reason I was interested in doing it this way is because if you recall the scan sap version didn't have water on it it had hydrates 
Uh, does this have water? Yeah, this has water. And we don't have water. <laughs> well, that sucks. There's no water on the moon, folks. There's lots of regolith. Um, this, this, this ore. We could do the ore version. If we want to uh, use my version, that converts ore. Remember, it assumes that the ore has some hydration in it. It is a rock that is hydrated but uh, of course it takes a lot more power we really need like a nuclear sort of deal here a reactor to power our isru looks like that spot's pretty good doesn't it that's convenient too it, uh, we don't have to worry about a polar landing hmm if we have to have a base on the moon we might as well go with the ore drilling version get that water like that and land there i guess logically what that means is whatever crashed into there made that crater uh, that had some water on it i'm sold <laughs> i'll take that okay so that job is done but let's start constructing our test mars mission in orbit around the earth and to do that of course we're going to have to do a lot of launches because we're using a relatively small launch vehicle so let's get to it okay so we're going to launch the control module and the docking module for our eventual mars ship now again this is all going to be tested without any crew initially uh, but the modules are up here basically the control module is just um, well obviously the command module and then reaction wheels and then really big thrusters that allow the turning of what's going to be a fairly large ship about 150 tons the thrusters are actually the same as the verniers that you've seen on the Link spacecraft's um, service module, so they're the same thrust, they're the same things. And uh, they're in this fairing, we'll see them once we get into space. Uh, but I wanted to introduce this booster. <laughs> so, uh, somebody had asked about recoverability of the cores for Sagita, but the fact is that they get too far out to just parachute them down, even with, if I had stage recovery, which I don't right now. And boy, is this staging wrong. Um, but yeah, so we can't do it for the cores, uh, whether it's in booster configuration or not. Uh, but if we slap on a side booster like this with a single ED4, we can do it with the side booster. So I made this custom side booster. Sorry, the nose cone's a little bit sloppy. Um, and we've got the real shoot parachutes here. And of course, the engine there. And here are the fun bits. First of all, inflatable floats and so I've got that action grouped hopefully we can get that going when we need to and up uh, the tank has um, separation motors built in so that's no problem and also my Pac-Man engine encapsulation device the first time I get to use that in a practical way you may or may not have seen the video where I talked about the design of this it's mainly meant for recovering engines from orbit so we'll close them up in a nice shell it's not really, I, I don't know, orbit, I, I, I don't know if it's really protective enough, but there's supposed to be, so there'll be a decoupler and then a heat shield there, and then it's got built-in RCS if we want to use them, though I haven't fueled it up because that's not the situation we're in right now, uh, but it'll decouple and then use the RCS to orient retrograde, use the heat shield, and then you recover the engine. Now, the, uh, in this case, the engine sort of goes in here. This is the donut type which means that there's a hole in the middle, right? <laughs> uh, this is not for recovering an engine cluster from uh, basically from orbit or from really high velocities. This is for the booster type, and all it does is, if you close it, it's a shell, and it'll protect it from the water, hopefully. That's the idea. That's why we're carrying the extra mass anyway. So you can see it's 0.4 tons, not light, I mean, compared to the booster itself. The booster, uh, you know, it's uh, 0.9 tons, and then uh, fueled up, it's 18 tons. That's a pretty reasonable ratio. And uh, we've got the parachutes, which are additional mass, and of course the engine itself, which is another 1.4 tons. So it's not a light booster. It doesn't add a whole lot of delta V, but I'm doing it for fun. <laughs> so uh, I'm just doing it for fun. And... I, I think I'll just launch this manually. It's pretty tight, you can see 9,207 meters per second. 
The booster lasts for 57.4 seconds, you can see here. Obviously, we could add more boosters. I mean, we could add four, but I always like the configurations with just one. And yeah, I'll, I'll launch it without KOS this time, just to make sure I get the floats out and everything. I have to configure the, the whole thing. If we take a look in here, we've got docking port. This is the control module. It's got a methane and oxygen for RCS. I think one thing I could do is maybe underfuel it a little bit. There's no problem with that for now. It just needs to be able to orient the thing. It has It's ringed with solar panels. They only provide uh, 600 watts or so. Um, so yeah, and I have no idea about the solar cell degradation thing. That's new to Realism Overhaul. I have no experience with it. So we'll figure out what goes on. And because it's a standard probe core and I've made the generic thing 2 gigabytes, it can carry 2 gigabytes too. So it's got that. I don't know what its antenna range is, but from low Earth orbit, it better be good enough. Okay, so those are that's the situation. Let's launch it. Hmm. Well, we seem to be a bit upside down. Probably best I didn't use KOS. Uh, let's control from here. There we go. Uh, let me just try and control from the actual control module to see that it's not backwards. Otherwise, that's going to be a persistent problem with our whole setup. Uh, you control from here. Oh, it is upside down. Okay, hold on. Um, maybe maybe it won't be a problem. We can just control for the docking port. In fact, that's good for reminding me that I have to control from the docking port. All right. Yep. Let's just get on with it. I need to. I want to put everything in line with the moon for simplicity's sake. Again, we could uh, use the moon as a parking location later on. So, time warp. Make sure things are getting refueled. Okay, that will do. Throttle up. SAS is on. Uh, retract the building structure and ignition and launch oh it rocked that a little bit as it often does when you only have one booster it moved off to side. what what something exploded that's not nice better start turning quickly. Let's not talk about the explosion. Okay, plate and uh, uh, okay, good. <laughs> Ooh, that's not a very good separation. Oh, oh, it appears to have gotten destroyed by our thrust. Hmm, well, that system might need some work. It definitely did not separate with enough vigor. Yep, definitely not. And possibly I need to shift the um, separation motor up a bit, it looks like. Now, I mean, I guess we could try and reserve fuel, and if we did, weren't carrying such a heavy load for this, you know, we could try, or with the boosters with a Sajita Heavy, we could try and reserve fuel so that they actually use the engines to land and add landing legs and all that business. Obviously that would just cut down on payload capacity. Uh, we have evidence that that is doable. So it's just a matter of calculating how much we need to reserve. And if I was in career mode, maybe I would be more concerned about that. Um, separation. Yeah? No? Okay, we're good on that. Need to throttle up. And fairing set. So, I mean, it's a pretty simple crew module. Uh, nothing too fancy. It You can tell it's based on this tank, except it's got more insulation, it's got more structure to it. It's a bit wider and much heavier. The control module plus this is uh, 12.6 tons. That includes some fuel in the control module. But, you know, the ISS modules are much wider. I think they're 4.4 meters or more. Uh, this is only going to be 3.6, 3.7-ish. 
so I think it's about right. Also, I think it's shorter than the ISS modules, at least uh, shorter than Destiny. Probably not shorter than Unity, I think, because Unity is sort of blocky. Anyway, uh, if you saw my rocket science videos, you may remember the androgynous propellant-only docking port that I designed. It's heavier than I stated in those videos because uh, people said that they thought that maybe it was a little bit too light. So I added the mass appropriate for, I actually put an internal structure to it, a ring, and then side panels of titanium, of titanium ring and such. I calculated it all out and basically doubled the mass. Now it's about the same as the propellant only docking port that you get uh, with real realism overall. It's about 0.1 tons or so. Uh, these are NASA docking systems from SSTU, and uh, I removed the rotational module thing because that always irritated me. We're putting this into a fairly high orbit. Uh, I, I actually want a stationish orbit. Looks like we had way more delta V than I thought we would. Oh, is it trying to draw fuel from anything? No. Okay. So yeah, um, the delta V was lying, I guess. It was only telling me I had 9,200, so I don't know where the rest of this comes from. Um, it might have been something to do with the staging, because I don't have a separate inner stage, right? The inner stage is just the first stage, so that can trick it. it might be tricking it now, too, come to think of it. I don't know. Maybe I should be careful. Um, there's no separate decoupler here. This tank is the decoupler, so that could throw it off, too. And we're going lopsided. Yeah, it's not as much as it was looking like. This this delta V reading is wrong because I don't have a separate decoupler there. That'll be fine. Okay, we I actually want the apoapsis to be a little bit lower. Um, I wonder if we could actually have this deorbit itself. And I don't have any RCS on it. Shoot, because it didn't have a. Hmm. Well, it's got a little bit of rotation. Hold on. We've got some electric charge. If we wait until it goes retrograde, it should be all right. I'm getting impatient, and the fuel is already... Oh, the fuel is unstable. I don't think we can manually... Oh, I, it doesn't seem like we have control either. Okay, let's abandon that. I thought I put a controller inside that, but okay. Well, I guess it's already staged. It's already staged. All right, well, I want to pull down that... Uh, Oh, right. Unlock. Uh, pull down that uh, apoapsis a bit, and then we want to lift the periapsis. Oh, the relative inclination is pretty bad, too. Whoa! Come on. Come back around. Uh, the docking module has full shielding. We've got a little bit of lithium hydroxide packed into. Again, these thrusters are supposed to turn an entire 150. I should probably just tune those down. <laughs> it's also got a reaction wheel, so and that's a reaction wheel meant to turn the full 150 ton station too. So yeah. So I guess for this right now, the max stopping time in MechJeb's attitude adjustment is too high. I should probably tune it down. Wow, 200? It might have it. Yeah, it's got a lot of methane and oxygen to be honest. Now, I don't know if I have to specify the probability of this, these humidity controller or pressure controller or anything like that breaking... Oh, why do we have two? Okay, that's not right. We have a duplicate. It's like two scrubbers, two humidity. I'll have to check that. That's not right. As much as I would like a backup, um, right now we've got three years of nitrogen, which I did pack, and it says perpetual for the food, water, and oxygen, which is only because we don't have Kerbals on board. Good radiation protection, though. Uh, I think we're probably too far away from the descending node to continue fixing our relative inclination, yeah. So... We can still do the prograde part. Or because... So the reason why uh, this is backwards and I decided to leave it backwards is because 
pointed this way, the thrusters aren't blowing at the station, as you see. Um, and sorry, that there was a texture issue. That The textures aren't supposed to look this way. The issue is if the original model is attached to a part with animations, it had a glitch with the textures. Um, and once you separate it off, it can't... I, I don't know how to fix it. So it's some weird materials thing in Blender that caused that. They're not supposed to look that way, but I decided to take it. They look appropriately haphazard and uh, nothing I do is ever meant to look perfect. So there's that. Anyway, but yeah, that's why I wanted to keep it oriented this way because um, uh, it won't blow out the station. Except for the nitrogen. I think it's only 30 days of food, water, and oxygen we have here. Okay. Uh, one hour and 33 minute orbit is good. Uh, we really don't need to be puffing. What I want to do is make sure we're getting power. Now, this little panel is sort of made the same way as the service module on Lynx. So I don't know if the way I think it ought to be oriented is the way that would get the best electric charge we are about to see. We know it's been getting electric charge, so that's good. And we know that it's rated charge of... Uh, which, uh, well, it said 600 watts should be enough to cover the 550 this seems to require. I say seems to, I said it. <laughs> I mean, obviously I said it for a reason like that. Mm. Well, let's hold it there. Oh, when it's using the reaction wheel, it uses more electric charge. No, it doesn't seem like this orientation, which is sort of the way I would expect the solar panels to work, is working. All right. Um, maybe it's only during time warp. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. It's still at... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's at a minor angle away from where I think it ought to be. The problem is Kerbalism actually tracks electric charge when we're not focused on things like the LUNSAT and LUNSCAN we've got here. Right now, that the LUNSCAN's in shadow, but I left it oriented towards the sun. So I don't know if Kerbalism obeys the whole... I mean, goes with persistent rotation on this or, or what. I think we should visit those satellites just to see for future reference. So we, we will launch the next thing over to this. And I think... I want a tug, and I want more solar panels, because this isn't. Uh, we can't add another module to this, you know, another hab module, until we add some solar panels with this kind of electric charge situation. So, probably a solar array would be also necessary, but the tug will have to be first or in the same fairing. We'll see. But let me visit those satellites that seem to be out of power. Okay. Well, it certainly is out of power. But will it get power back? Uh, yes, it will. Okay. Um, not ideally turned towards the sun. Let's try and get optimized. Oh, um, the fact that SAS gets turned off when it's out of power might be a minor issue because persistent rotation only does its thing when SAS is on. But otherwise, this should definitely be able to... Let's see, uh, on one orbit, does it fully recharge? No, not quite. But let's see what happens. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it only took a little bit. Now it's fully recharged. It only takes a very little bit when it's on the nighttime side. So it should never fully deplete. Signal loss of control module. No, see... Oh, well, well signal loss is fine. That, that just means it's over some... Particular look, yeah, now it's back. Very temporary gap in our communications. The ground station should be good enough for that. But yeah, it's never it never should run out of power. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to watch out with Kerbalism. Now let's check on, well, we can go by the map to check on the other satellite, Lunsat 1. I want my commsats to continue working, you know. It shows a communication link, even. Well, it says no electric charge. 
does seem to be edge on to the sun now. I don't think I left it that way. Well, I guess uh, I guess it's done for. I can't do anything about that. Unless it randomly orients towards the sun again. Well, yeah, again, without SES, without power, it's not going to be able to do anything. Okay, well, one Lunasat is already down. Anyway, let's launch the next module to our uh, station slash Mars ship. Okay, well, I was time warping to the right relative inclination. Well, actually, I accidentally passed it, but I just got a message that said that the control module batteries are getting low. Again, I oriented it towards the sun, and it should definitely be recharging. But, um, well, let's just launch right now, even though we've got a relative inclination problem. I enabled staging on the docking port, so we should be getting a correct reading on the delta V now, instead of what we were getting before, which was sort of incorrect. So, retracting that, and this time we have four boosters. And I put extra separatrons on the nose so that um, hopefully they'll separate cleanly this time. We'll see. Anyway, SAS on, ignition. And launch. This is going to be very fast. <laughs> it's got a thrust to weight ratio of two right now. I could, I'm launch. so I didn't even say what I was launching. I'm launching the tug and a hab. And the reason is I couldn't fit the tug and a solar array at the same time. This is the largest fairing I have for this rocket. And you can tell it's pretty darn large. So, yeah. We'll, I decided to just slap solar panels on the tug to feed the HAB's uh, power needs. It's possible that the recharge rate wasn't good enough on the control module for the nighttime side of the Earth. Hopefully these supplementary solar panels on the tug will help. Okay, eight and seven. What? Oh, those are too vigorous. Well, someday. <laughs> those were too strong, those separatrons, and I should probably add some on the side. Eh, it's so complicated. I've got the fairing staging first before we actually get through this stage. What kind of thrust weight ratio are we pulling here? Since I've throttled down. Well, this thrust weight ratio 4, I think we're going at 1G. Side throw out. Well, no, not quite. All right. Well, fairings anyway. Fairings anyway. Off they go. At least the fairings work cleanly. So it's a very simple hab module. It's a uh, re again padded, you know, uh, mi micrometeorite uh, protection and those sorts of layers, uh, you know, more insulation on top of one of these tanks. And then you can see some additional structure outside of it just for breebling, honestly. And it weighs more. And then the tug, which I had designed a long time ago for the Shuttle Constructed Mars mission. Okay, separation. And... Nozzle extension, double check the ISP, it's good. And we seem to be good for orbit. Let me just manage our inclination with respect to the target. Is that gonna help? It's still gonna help, okay. All, all the stuff at the top together is 16 tons, so that's what we needed four boosters to lift on the regular Sajita. Because of suggestions, originally the thrusters on this uh, tug were in line, but because we ended up wanting to dock stuff here, they are now pointed down. I still didn't put RCS ports on here, shoot. So this one will also not be able to descend. It's got a control unit, otherwise it wouldn't have MechJab or KOS or anything. It's got electric charge. Hmm. And it's got comms. Okay, that's good enough. Alright. 
Now, I don't actually want to separate that just yet. Um, want to... Well, I guess we could just pull it off like this. But no, that's not good for use of these thrusters. So going to decouple. Signal loss with tug and hab ship. Well, that side. See, it should have control, though. Oh, no, it really... Oh, it's got to be tight fit. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. There's a bigger version of this tug, too. Okay. Okay, fit. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right. Well, um... You know, we could deorbit that stage now. Let's be good space citizens or whatever. So how much thrust does this have right now? 60. So it's 15 kilonewtons per nozzle. That's fair. At the, the engine size, I mean. Okay, that'll be good enough. And decouple. Again, we need to be in a higher orbit in order to do the rendezvous quickly. And if the control module is really running out of power, we probably want to do it quickly. Yeah, there's something forming up there, but that's a lot of relative speed. We can afford it, though. Now, a uh, little innovation since my Shell Constructed Mars mission. The Shell Constructed Mars mission had a separate OMS system, but I realized that since we're carrying the tugs anyway, and we probably will carry them all the way to Mars to help with maneuvering, we can use the tugs themselves as the OMS system for the, for the Mars mission and use their engines to provide the supplementary thrust when the ion engines aren't going to do. So they're going to be mounted on the mission in such a way as their little 15 kilonewton engines can help out. And that is the intention. Obviously, this isn't the greatest way to have the thrust, but I mean, if this is micrometeorite protection and all sorts of shielding and everything, it should be all right, right? Right. Obviously, the tugs can also operate as sky cranes. That will become important later on, though I'll need to use the bigger version than this to deploy the USI modules if I want to do that. Oop. Um, the USI modules I've resized for realism overhaul by a factor of 1.6, that's pretty standard, going from 2.5 meters to 4 meters for instance. And so, well this module is not quite 4 meters and it's barely fitting in there. There is a collider there, so I mean, it's like, I, I hope nothing bad happens when I release it. Loon Scan 1 batteries getting low. Now, we demonstrated that Loon Scan 1 should never have its batteries getting low. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do about Kerbalism and its tracking of power here. So just for reference, we still got 425 days till the next Mars window. We'll have to check on boil off. Uh, we might have to top off the methane and oxygen, but probably we'll have to top off the methane and oxygen before we leave. And we haven't really sent up all of it yet anyway. And okay, the control module is back. Okay, well we better be careful though, because it's barely got any power. Wait, wait, it's losing power again. Gosh darn it. So, here, it's recharging. And then, you know, maybe it's something to do with the interaction between stuff like uh, KSP Interstellar. Because KSP Interstellar does electric charge stuff too. But when I time warp, it starts losing electric charge. That's not going to be good at all. So I can't time warp. And get... That used to be a problem with KSP Interstellar, but I thought it was fixed in 1.3. But uh, maybe if you've got enough crazy mods put together, it might cause problems. That's what I'm here to figure out, <laughs> largely. 
Uh, I'm here to figure out where where things go wrong. And hopefully I can propose a solution and not just complain about it. I think we'll just leave this oriented like this and have the other side dock. I was thinking of having it turn towards the other object, but that's probably not going to be great. Okay, well, this definitely has power, so that's good. And it'll be able to recharge the other one fully if the problem was the... Um, uh, the capacity wasn't enough for the nighttime side. There's also going to be an inflatable hab module. That'll be a B330 Bigelow Aerospace one made by Raider Nick. So that won't be one that... Well, either I'm going to use the Raider Nick one or an SSTU one. We'll see. Probably the Raider Nick one. I do not have the modding skills to create an inflatable module. I don't think I'm going to be good at that. So I will rely on somebody else's. There are choices. You know, there's the USI inflatable modules, SSTU ones. Rear Nick's uh, big letter space. I've, I mean, either way, we don't know the exact numbers for one of those inflatable inflatable modules. So we'll see. Those are about twenty tons. But for a long trip to Mars, we need a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, there's still an awkward load for this. So there's certain directions the RCS ports are not great at managing. But it's not too bad. So basically, as far as what I've got envisioned, on one side here, we'll have the lander. On the other side, we'll have the logistics module and an airlock module. And then when crew needs to be transferred to and from the Mars ship uh, back to Earth, or to, from Earth, and then we'll dock the links on this one here. Now I'll have the best balance characteristics. The Lynx isn't going to go with the crew over to Mars because uh, it's just used for to and from Earth to a high Earth orbit. There's no need to carry it all the way. And some other pod could be used in its place of course. I think the Lynx is probably nicer than Orion in a way, but <laughs> if you wanted to use Orion, you could use Orion, that's fine. Hmm, I don't know, I set force roll to zero, but I, I don't know if... what that's relative to, to be honest. Presumably to the stocking port. That doesn't seem perfectly lined up with the other stuff on this module. All right, we're docked. Okay, well, the best thing to do will be to roll a little bit here for the solar panels. And it should recharge pretty darn well right now. So we won't have to send up a solar truss for a while because this tug has the solar panels. We'll see. This should be a good orientation for most things. And I wanted relative rotation to the sun. Please keep doing that. Okay. Well, this is what we've got so far. And I think I'll leave it here. So we've started constructing it. And we will continue. Again, I figured that we're going to need a lot of living space. Uh, if for no other reason than Kerbalism requires living space. They're not very happy if they don't have enough living space. So... I trust this will provide enough if we have the inflatable one as well and every all the other stuff. And maybe the next thing we should send up is the logistics module. I think that we've got 30 days of stuff here and then another 30 here. So that's obviously not enough for a Mars trip. We need also a recycler, a water recycler at minimum. They have the built-in carbon dioxide things. This one has just one scrubber, humidity control, and pressure control. I don't know why this has two. So I'm going to make a note uh, to check on that. And I will do so before the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.